Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Duality 9Xers around the world. Welcome back to another exciting episode right here on Duality 9X, where we do our best to separate fact from fiction. But real or fake, well, that's a decision you need to make. So if you guys haven't already, smash the like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, I can't wait to hear your guys' comments because we've got a great lineup of videos for you guys, but I want to hear your perspective. How far are we exactly from the truth? Well, your comments are going to be able to help us ascertain that. So if you guys are ready and you guys have your beverage, you guys are strapped in and settled, well, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right to it. Hey, man, watch. All right. Well, um, so I've featured these guys before uh, in some of my earlier videos. And, and at first I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Because this is obviously footage coming from some kind of a camera or something like that. And how could they possibly fake this? Now, I'm not saying this is fake, guys. But it seems like every other video that I see from their space, uh, it's the same thing. The cross goes upside down or the lights start blinking pretty crazy. Things start moving around. The doors, you know, open up. Actually, you see where the TV is right there? At one point, there was actually a bed there too. Um, yeah, anyways. But she keeps observing the footage. She realizes right. that this woman appears to have a baby in her hands. This footage right here literally is the reason I never, ever want to leave my house again. Me and my husband don't really get to get out much together, so we hired a babysitter and went out to dinner. And my phone had an alert, and this is what we saw on the doorbell. We called our babysitter and told her to go into the master bedroom. So they don't know what's going on. They immediately call their babysitter at home and tell them to hide in the restroom. So this whole time, they're speaking to her through the camera, but they can't hear anything on the other end. Said there was just white noise, probably due to the storm. They're trying to reassure her, telling her that the police are on their way. What happens here, I can't actually show you. What I saw next made my heart drop. After they said the police were coming, she drops whatever it was she was holding in her hand and just takes off. See her holding hair that looks like a baby was a doll. She must have been using it as a prop to get into. As she keeps observing the footage, she realizes that this woman appears to have. Huh. <laughs> wow, guys. You know what? I, I don't know if that was a baby. It looked like it was a doll. But there's a lot of these kind of videos where, where people are pretending to uh, impersonate or they're impersonating somebody. They're pretending to be somebody. There was one guy who came to somebody's door and he, and he was dressed up in a, a really nice suit. Uh, he had a police badge, which you could clearly see uh, right on his, um, on his belt loop. And then he had his walkie-talkie. And he was actually listening in on police chatter. Um, you know, and he, he was pretending to actually uh, converse with them as well, too, with his uh, with his headquarters. And like one can only imagine why. Why do these people do what they do? Why are they trying to con you into believing that there's somebody else? Because I think the ultimate reason is they're trying to get into your home or they're trying to see how far they can get. And then the next time around, once they have enough understanding as to the kind of reactions to get from people opening the door and stuff then who knows that could that could potentially lead to something something more sinister down the road so yeah when stuff alien like that, technology yeah. did you see that video of those 10 foot creatures in brazil that was actually caught on video i did see those Dude, wild look at this little <gasps> they're moving then like one there's like one where it's like walking down the mountain it looked really tall yeah but then there is one in Mexico as well. Look at that thing. Oh, it looks similar. It's huge. There's a lot of things happening in different places all the way across the world. You can't coordinate that. Then this one was in Canada. It looks just like the one in California. Yeah. Right? That one's weird. Dude. And then a couple.
couple of them in Chicago. Those are weird. Already. And then watch them zoom off. Like, God, jellyfish. Dude, these things are moving fast. That's demonic. It's weird, right? Weird. You need to check out the one that happened in Mexico. Oh, it's literally this Mexico? thing flying down the road, what? just like gliding. Crap. And it's changing colors. Ooh, what? That's like really good footage. <laughs> it's just like signs. Dude, Swing away. What's going on? I'm going to go buy a drone, hang little prisms off it, and just start flying it around your house one night. <laughs> Speaking of alien tech. Yeah, guys. Um, if you watched yesterday's video, uh, actually, I think it's the first video clip after my intro. And uh, this guy's talking to Steve-O. And uh, he's, he's talking about um, UFO jellyfish, right? And they call it UFO jellyfish because it looks like a jellyfish. And it's just kind of floating around. Like, I don't have that actual video. I just have one of the guys who was actually talking about it. But that kind of give you, you know, what you just saw kind of gives you an example of the kind of stuff that's actually out there. And people from all over the world are, are starting to see this. Actually, the one that I saw was, uh, I think, um, close to a military base um, overseas. And it was just really odd the way this thing just kind of moved across from one end to another. Um, it just looked like extraterrestrial. It looked like something out of this world. And then it would just go right into the water and boom, it just disappears. And then I think it came right back out again. But Rock. very, very bizarre. Look at the precision and incredible detail carved into this statue. It's made from a single piece of limestone and was cut directly from the bedrock. This is the colossal statue of Ramses II, one of the most powerful pharaohs in ancient Egyptian history. It stands at a height of approximately 10 meters or 33 feet. The muscle tone and detail around the kneecap is incredible, and it's the same on his arm. It's not easy to carve this level of precision in any statue, especially a colossal statue of this size. Look at how precise the garment is. All of this was supposed to have been done by hand, with primitive tools, and absolutely no All machinery or advanced technology. Potentially by primitive tools. How on earth did people like in that time even pull something like this off now if we're just talking about a handful of these statues and and buildings they were everywhere i mean just just look at the statue and look it, it's got a um it's got a knife a dagger that's tucked into the belt loop there and i mean just the detail and and there's so much emphasis on detail, right? To the the muscles being striated, like you know, just uh, it's absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. And you see these buildings, these mega buildings, like in like South America and including Egypt and other parts of the world, where the 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 bricks were like huge. Like, I'm talking about like maybe ten tons, twenty tons of like for one brick and how how flat they were precision like like even today's technology and drills um they would probably get that but it would take a lot of there'd be a lot of added layers of complexity and effort just to be able to pull that off in today's day and age just imagine how they were able to do it back then um i'd love to hear your guys comments ancient aliens extraterrestrials jinns yeah I want to know what he knows. He was recently asked if there's any story he is truly scared to cover, and he responded with UFOs. He said there is a side to this story that gets so dark he couldn't even tell his own wife. And he said there is a spiritual aspect of it that he doesn't even understand, which makes me wonder what the heck are they hiding from us? As usual, guys, I want you all to listen to this without open mind. Join me on this journey. Let's listen. Are there things that you're scared to cover? You're sitting there saying, wow, yeah. this is like soul yeah. crushing, like to the point where like it really scares yeah, you there, in your soul. There are two. Yes, there are two. Um, one is the 2020 election. The second thing that bothers me is the UFO story. And 
you know, the more you dig into that and talk to people with knowledge, with actual knowledge of, there are parts of that story that I do not understand at all that are really, really, really dark. It's so dark that I, you know, haven't told my wife about it. I mean, I, I haven't verified any of this, but this is not just stuff that I read on the internet. I know you all are very, very grounded in that story. So I think I know, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. but there's some stuff there that's just like, man, I, I'm not even sure what that means. There's a spiritual component there that I, I don't fully understand. Um, so yes, that story bothers me. Part of it is the public can't deal with it. It's too far out. The implications are too um, profound. And so, and I understand that because I've heard things where I'm just like, oh man, I, I don't even really want to know that. I saw this oh, video. Honestly. Deeply so. disturbing stuff. You know, forget like saucers you know I mean? and technology. It's yeah, deeply, yeah. No, deeply no, no, disturbing no. stuff that I haven't even told Natalie. Yep. I agree with you. It's so disturbing. Exactly. I can't even tell my kids. My kids ask me different stories about it. and I. One of the most prolific things that Hollywood have actually shown us about aliens is the Project Bluebeam. Now, if you do your research on Project Bluebeam, you will find a lot of things that are already in place in our world today. But this is the most scary part. The most scary part is in the South Pole in Antarctica. It says that they were, they, these guys actually had a meeting there and they invited Buzz Aldrin and many other important elites and they had this particular meeting, especially Amara Bird was there. They said they actually discovered something. But whatever was discussed in that place did not leave that room. And I'm pretty sure that is the reason why uh, Dr. Carlson says he hasn't even told his wife yet, he hasn't even told anybody because of this thing is actually scary. And if you guys remember the Illuminati card game and this card game actually talked about the same things that we be talking about right now that there's foreign help coming from somewhere and some people actually believe that if you look at in the 1960s computers were so large and all of a sudden when they went to the moon and come back some people say that they come back with uh, high technology that they visited somewhere but i don't know how true that is but if you think about yeah, it and um if you guys so that 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 interview with Tucker Carlson, um, you guys can watch that by visiting Redacted. Uh, they've got uh, a great YouTube channel, and they cover a lot of topics. Uh, you know, uh, and and this one in particular actually caught my attention, and I, I saw that actual videos. It was just uh, it was mind blowing um, stuff that Tucker Carlson was talking about, and and he said it with such authenticity. You know how like. Clearly, he's 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 visualizing what he's talking about, and he himself, as he's talking about it, is feeling disturbed. So, um, but yeah, if you guys want to dig deeper into it, go check out Redacted. Then the ice starts to go from smooth to, to starting to break up here. <laughs> like, where are we right now? What planet is this? I'm pretty sure this one's going to be interesting. I want you guys to keep an open mind when you listen to this. Join me as I continue on this journey. Just take a full picture. I like how it, that Earth is beating the glacier. See that interesting shape? Oh wow, it's yeah. Making? Just mesmerized. I've never seen terrain like this. It's so insane, isn't it? How is this is right at the edge of it? Pools of water. Oh, ice. Like, cold. I don't even know what... I, I, here. Not like nothing you've ever seen. Uh, uh, nothing like... Nothing it blows away seen. anything we've seen so far. Oh, man. The ice below us is... <laughs> that's like the Grand Canyon of ice. Yep. I'm just like blown away looking up at the, at the walls and the peaks next to us. There are many things in the world that we are not allowed to discover because if we are allowed to discover them then our perception of this whole world will change like a big veil will be drawn down from our eyes like there is more to chasing money there is more to just working 9 to 5 there is more to doing all these things there is more you are capable of more far more and these guys are willing to die to keep you from knowing these things imagine look at this place could you imagine something like this would would exist would you 
in, in, in a place like this, would you believe something like this would, would, would be available? Just as that pilot we actually saw down there was um, 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 climbed over the, the wall, we don't even know if he, that this is true because you know that the, the powers that be won't allow anyone to go there. The powers won't allow anyone to go there. Like they swore, they, they swore that no one would go there. Why? Because they, they feel that once you discover what is there, then they will lose it, you know, because of everyone will say, okay, let's share it, you understand? Let's share the knowledge. Let, let it go around. That one thing these guys don't want is for everything to go around. Imagine Nikola Tesla discovered free energy and today we are still paying for it. The reason is because they don't want they don't want they don't want you to have it just like that. No, they want you to pay for it. So that their perception of this world will be you must pay to get you anything know, uh, you want. That that content creator makes a really good point. I mean, there there's a lot of stuff out there in the world that we just don't have answers to. We can't explain. And when we try to get close to it, we kind of feel like we're we walk one step towards it we're getting pushed back 10 steps right so um and there's a reason certain people in the world want to keep things private they want to keep it discreet and for all, a lot of obvious reasons as well because sometimes uh the general public they may not be ready for it you know they come across something that could be too good to be true could be helpful in a lot of ways and people may profit off of it take advantage of it and i'm not talking about the government i'm not talking about these illuminati and all these people i'm talking about the average person right you know so um it's really interesting you know it's, there's all kinds of stuff out there and the whole world is there for you to explore but just be careful how you tread you know April 2014, two Dutch students were volunteering in Panama. They set off on a popular hiking trail and seemingly vanished. Ten weeks after their disappearance, a local woman found a blue lycra backpack near a riverbank. Inside the backpack were various items, including two neatly folded bras, the girls' mobile phones, and a digital camera. The phones showed that in the first days of their hike, a number of phone calls were attempted to the emergency services. Only one of those calls connected, but it was quick quickly cut off. The camera contained photos from the 1st of April. Both girls were seemingly happy. But the camera also contained 90 photos that were taken between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m., seven days after their disappearance. Two months after the backpack was found, the rescue team found a pelvic bone and then a boot with the foot still inside. A little while after that, they found 33 more bones scattered around the riverbank. But the mystery doesn't end wow. there. It turns out that on the 1st of April 2014, Part 46. In 1913, a 12-year-old black girl named Sarah Rector was given land deemed unsuitable for farming. But it turned out to be rich with oil and she became a millionaire overnight. She was known as the richest colored girl in the world and Oklahoma legislation even made an effort to have her legally declared white. These natural ice formations in Antarctica look like structures built by the ancient Romans. An electric company in Arkansas was forced to post this PSA after someone took out a power line with an unbelievable arrow shot. Mario Puzo, the author of the Godfather books who also adapted them to film, had no idea what he was doing since he'd never written a script before. After winning two Oscars, he decided to buy a book on screenwriting to learn how to improve. In the very first chapter, it said to study the first Godfather film. Insane Have it. That's what they've been hiding from you. For all of you who don't believe in dragons, uh, go ahead and sit and spin on this. Uh, Brother, I'm like 90% sure this thing's a movie prop. Oh, you damn sack of shit. Can't you let me have this? I just... Go worry about the fact your wife's sleeping with her... Oh, you didn't have to go uh, there. ...fitness uh, uh, trainer. Well, there you have it. say real or fake, right? I kind of agree with one of the guys saying that this is a looks like a movie prop to me. Oh boy, what a mistake. Easily the most horrifying trip I'd taken in my life. So we'd parachuted down. What I didn't realize was we had 
vastly miscalculated and actually dropped into a very poorly explored area of Antarctica. We trekked for God, I mean just miles, and eventually I see these great big, just fantastical looking caves, you know, and I'm going, that's strange, you know, I didn't know about this uh, cave structure being here, but so God... Rude awakening, you know, so we're walking on through and my God, man, just... Uh, gorgeous, some of the most gorgeous ice work you've ever seen in your life. And so, unfortunately, we kept on walking through this cave. And What was weird about Antarctica? I'd found this town that wasn't on any of our maps. It was hidden. Um, my grandfather had told me about it as a boy, said it was created and controlled by this parasitic species. Uh, they uh, needed to feed on humans to survive, and so they brought in a small human population, brainwashed them, let them procreate, and they would feed on these humans as they'd pleased. I I'd spent years watching this town, studying it, trying to learn as much about these creatures as I could, but you you'd really only ever see the humans. The creatures lurked in the shadows of this town. They controlled it from the unseen. Uh, uh, there was there was this, this huge building the humans would religiously go to every day. I'd realized it was a sort of church, and this was how the creatures kept such a stranglehold over the, the humans' minds. Uh, this was how they'd tricked them into never leaving Somersville, kind of making the humans obediently and willingly give themselves up for these creatures whenever they'd be called upon for feeding. When one human went missing, the rest simply thought they'd been chosen by God to serve a, a higher purpose, but um, wow. they were just being grotesquely harvested in tunnels below the village. I'd found this town that wasn't... Yeah, the moon is Rustin. I've heard about it. So there's this kid that took the most high quality picture of the moon ever taken. Over like 2,000 images that he combined. And you can clearly see that the moon is rusting. And then I saw this on NASA. Research indicates the presence of hematite, a form of rust that normally requires oxygen and water. This has scientists puzzled. Hematite is a name that is derived from the Greek word meaning blood. All right. Joel crazy. 2, it says, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's weird. It's throughout scripture, the moon turning to blood and like, what does that mean? So like the Bible, it was ultimately translated into Greek at one point, right? And the Greek word for blood is hematite, the same word that they use for this rust. Yeah. And so it's like the moon has hematite on it. Yeah. That's weird. It's all going to end soon. See you better. End times yeah. is coming, my friends. Twice a day. On Pluto, the sun would appear a thousand times dimmer than it does from Earth, but that's still 300 times brighter than the full moon, so you could easily read a book on Pluto during the day. But you can experience the brightness of a Pluto day right here on Earth. Every day, just before sunrise and just after sunset, it is as bright on Earth as it is at noon on Pluto. NASA calls these moments Pluto time. And they've put together a calculator that can tell you exactly when your next Pluto time is. If you go outside at that time, you can get a feeling for Pluto life. That is the brightest it gets during the day on Pluto. But my favorite thing about the Pluto time calculator is that there's a by the numbers section that compares Pluto and Earth. Pluto was discovered in 1930, but when was Earth discovered? Would you like to experience terrifying creatures you should be glad are extinct. The Argentavis magnificens is the largest flying bird ever discovered, with a wingspan estimated to be between 16 and 26 feet. It lived around 9 million years ago in what is now Argentina. Its size yeah. and strength suggest it was a formidable predator, capable of preying on large mammals. The Sarcosuchus imperator was a giant crocodile that lived about 112 million years ago. It could grow up to 40 feet long and weigh up to 8 tons, making it one of the largest and most terrifying crocodile-like reptiles that ever lived. The Titanoboa serogenensis is the largest snake ever discovered. It lived approximately 60 million years ago, just after the age of the dinosaurs. It could grow up to 42 feet long and weigh about 1.25 tons and able to consume large prey. And finally, the Arthropleura, a giant millipede-like arthropod from the Carboniferous period, around 340 million years ago. It could grow up to 8.5 feet long. Subscribe for part two. An eight terrifying five creep. foot cockroach. You walk outside of your house, you're going for that nice walk, and all of a sudden, out comes this cockroach that's like nine feet long. 
what would you do? All right. And you turn, you start running into this alley and all of a sudden you stop because you see this Titan boa, a 40 foot, 42, 45 foot long snake that's coming for you. But behind you is this nine foot long cockroach. And into the left of you could be that crazy crocodile. Okay, now the story is getting out of hand. Um, could possibly happen depending on where you live in the world, maybe Florida, who knows. But that's, that's definitely some terrifying creatures. scrolling on Instagram the other day. There's a lot of strange things out there in the world, eh guys? This is in your home. Kill it. <laughs> Listen, and I don't care what you have to say. If I see this outside of my window, I'm going Mike Tyson on this, dropping a nuke. It's wiped off the face of the earth. Done. Gone. One of you guys tagged me in this video where this person claims that this huge bug lives outside of their window. And as you can see, there is a creepy face on there that kind of resembles Valak, which is a very popular demon from a horror movie. Over the course of the video, the face on the back of this moth ends up opening up more, or at least the mouth, which leads me to believe that this is not an actual insect. But with that being said, there are other moths and insects that have what resembles a face on their back. For example, what you guys are looking at here is known as the Death's Head Moth. And of course, this is because like the design on their back something. kind of looks like a skull. Either way, this is a fantastic example of the phenomenon known as pareidolia, where you recognize faces in inanimate objects, like the ones seen in the yes. photo behind me. If this is in your we heard that the largest mountain in the entire solar system is Olympus Mons, located on Mars. But have you ever seen the size comparison to the largest mountains here on Earth? Do you even realize how gigantic Olympus Mons really is? Olympus Mons is 25 kilometers or 16 miles tall and 600 kilometers or 374 miles wide. To give context to that, the area of this mountain is about the size of Arizona and twice as tall as the tallest mountain here on Earth, Mount Everest. But Mount Everest is only the tallest mountain on land. What about the tallest mountain that starts from the ocean floor? Mauna Kea is actually the tallest mountain on Earth from the base to its peak. And that one is a lot bigger than Mount Everest, so surely that will be taller or at least as tall as Olympus Mons, right? Nope. Not even close. Olympus Mons still towers over everything. In fact, if Olympus Mons was here on Earth, the peak of the mountain would be almost higher than the Earth's ozone layer. You've likely heard to know. Let's start small. In 5 billion years, the sun will become a red giant, consuming the earth. Over the next 100 trillion years, no more stars will be born and all the existing stars will die. One by one, the lights of the universe will go out. The universe will be filled with dead stars and black holes. Black holes will eventually consume the dead stars and over time, nothing more is left. The protons that make up you and me, the stars, the black holes, those protons will decay away into nothingness. The black holes themselves will also decay away via Hawking radiation. The universe will therefore end with a whimper, expanding for eternity in darkness and silence. Or perhaps it will start again, if we're lucky. Wow, nothingness. Do you know how the universe will end? I just felt this emptiness, you know, like you hear about stories about space being so cold and lonely and, you know, but on the contrary, uh, some astronauts say that space is very lively. There's a lot going on up there and it's quite noisy as well. These planets emit these sounds 
and they're yeah it's pretty interesting just google it maybe i'll maybe i'll play it in another video here but five billion years guys you guys have five billion years to get your investments and everything your financial house in order so you can retire comfortably five billion years guys but then 100 trillion years i think is when the whole universe is going to end can you draw this without ever lifting your pen off the paper probably not but i'm going to show you how I love this trick. When I was a kid, I showed this to everyone and they thought that I was not weird. Here's how you do it. Grab a sheet of paper and a marker. Begin with the dot. Now maintain contact with the paper and stop thinking in two dimensions. Grab the corner of the page and fold it into the dot. Now while maintaining contact with the paper, move on to the back of the page, come on up here, Come back onto the front of the page, fold the paper flat, okay. and complete the ring. He didn't lie. Can you draw this without ever lifting your That's pen one. off the paper? Probably. 1903, 19 years before the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb, Howard Carter uncovered something incredible. Right next to the mortuary temple of Queen Hatshepsut, after days of digging, the shovel struck a rock-cut facade hidden beneath the sand. They cleared it away to reveal the entrance to a 3,500-year-old ancient tomb. The tomb belonged to Senenmut, a very special advisor to Queen Hatshepsut. As Carter and his team explored the tomb, they noticed something unusual. The ceiling was divided into two main sections, depicting what looked to be the night sky and mysterious star constellations. Although Carter had quickly identified the astronomical wow. features, little did he realize that this was a complex cosmological diagram. Scholars were shocked to find that the ceiling showed star constellations such as the Big Dipper and Sirius. It also depicted the 12 calendar months, clearly demonstrating that the ancient Egyptians had a... Mali, Africa. 1931. French anthropologist Marcel Griul treks through the forbidding desert in search of the mysterious Dogon tribe. As Griul starts collecting Dogon legends, he notices an eerie similarity to ancient tales found across the globe. Tales of amphibious gods, in this case called Nomo, who came from the sky, lived in the sea, and helped mankind. According to the Dogon, their gods didn't come from Sirius A, a star that is clearly visible in the evening sky, but from its tiny companion, a dying star called Sirius B, that can only be seen with advanced high-powered telescopes. The Dogon knew about the invisible companion star to Sirius. How did they know? How did they know? Morbid Facts, Part 60. In 2018, Sarah and Jennifer Hart drove a van carrying their six adopted children off a cliff. It was officially ruled a murder-suicide since the racist couple were abusive to their children for years. They apparently decided to end it all when they felt authorities closing in on their crimes. This disturbing drawing was made by a non-verbal dementia patient in a nursing home. In 1963, the Bronx Zoo had an exhibit called The Most Dangerous Animal in the World. The entire exhibit was just a mirror. Schizophrenic serial killer Richard Chase was nicknamed the Vampire of Sacramento because he drank his victim's blood. He later told detectives that he only went into homes that were unlocked. Since he took locked doors as a sign that he was unwelcome, but unlocked doors were an invitation to come inside. Hmm. Morbid Facts, Part heard of third man syndrome no. no okay super super weird so third man syndrome has been explained uh, by scientists of kind of a weird phenomenon that happens with mountain climbers so these people who are climbing on mountains who are on the edge of death have experienced very similar things unrelated to each other where they see a person that motivates them or gives them proper advice to continue moving forward and there are people like my parents weren't mountain climbing but this happened and it cannot be explained and then i found a story and it was this woman who had heard a voice 
voice in her head that said, go see a doctor about your brain. Go to this place. It was a specific part of the London hospital that dealt with brain injuries. The voices told her that she had a tumor. <gasps> they discovered a tumor. Oh my gosh. And they were able to remove it. And then she continued to leave. And then when she That's went wild. home, she heard the voice one more time for the rest of her life. And it said, we were glad to be of service. Ew, weird. That lady says ew a lot. Uh, in one of my other videos, she said "ew" as well, and I think somebody, uh, somebody commented on that. They didn't like that too much. So here at the South Pole, it is currently negative 86 Fahrenheit. I thought it'd be a good time to go see the pole marker because the last time I saw it, there's still a little bit of sunlight on the horizon, but now we've been in total darkness for about two months. We're just past the full moon now, so we've got a lot of light outside. This guy's at the South Pole. Wow. Wow. Man, imagine seeing that every day for two months straight. All right, so here I am at the actual geographic South Pole, right here. The whole globe spins around this spot. We've got a little sign saying that it's the geographic South Pole, American flag. Behind me back over here, you can see the elevated station where we all live and work. So you can see we're actually not that far from the pole, maybe 200 meters wow. or so to walk out Five here. Five months ago, they got daylight. It's Venus, that's Jupiter, and somewhere here is a Saturn. Let's see oh, how so somewhere between Venus, Venus and Jupiter, Saturn. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. I'm just so fascinated with space. Look at that, guys. Engineers, also known as pilots, were an ancient extraterrestrial species with advanced genetic engineering capabilities. They were credited with creating humanity and were revered as gods by their creations. These beings were hairless, tall, and exceptionally strong, often wearing biomechanical suits. Engineers had a complex culture, but their interactions with humanity were sometimes hostile. They possessed advanced technology, including genetic engineering, spacecraft, and bioengineering. And there were theories that their technology was based on even more advanced creatures. They also initiated a plan to wipe out humanity using a pathogen, but lost control of it leading to their extinction on LV-223. The crash of an engineer ship on LV-426, where xenomorph eggs were found, remains a mystery. But it is speculated that the ship was carrying these eggs as biogenic weapons. You may have seen this viral video showing exactly what would happen if a needle hit the Earth at the speed of light. And I want to see just how realistic this is. So I did the math. So let's assume the needle is made of just iron and weighs one gram and is traveling at 99.9999% the speed of light. When it strikes the Earth, it will have a kinetic energy of 201 million billion joules of energy. That is the equivalent of three Tsar bombs, the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated. It would definitely create an impact crater, significantly smaller than if it were an asteroid because the needle is just much smaller, but definitely big enough to cause some damage. It would form a huge fireball, probably a bit smaller than this, but still much bigger than even the biggest nukes. Now, of course, this is highly theoretical and nothing can travel at the speed of light. So you don't- Or do we? Oh, okay. This was the, the bridge in Baltimore that collapsed because that ship hit it. But watch this video. There's two birds that are seen flying and just disappear. Did you catch that? All right, guys. Well, that's all the time that we have for you guys today. I want I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Um, if you guys haven't already, uh, please smash the like, subscribe, and comment. There's a lot of videos that we covered today. Um, yeah, I definitely want to hear your comments. I'm, I enjoy reading them. I try to get through it. Uh, I try to reply to as many as I can. Uh, but you know, it's uh, it's really interesting. If you guys if you guys have any videos. Uh, if there's anything that you guys want me to cover and react to, 
uh, send it my way. You can email me or you can put it in the comment section and uh, I'll definitely do my best to get around to it. So I want to thank you guys again for uh, watching this video. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. And in the meantime and in between time, that's it. Another exciting episode of Duality 9 next. And I look forward to catching you guys on the next one. Have a great one.